but I decided it might be a bit distracting. I wouldn't want to, not to get in the way. Would you please stand and join us in our musical call to worship? Gracious God, we are in awe and filled with joy and wonder as we remember the miracle of your incarnation, the miracle of your coming to us, not in power or in glory or in majesty, but in humility, in weakness, as a child. Lord, give us grace to see your love in this wonderful day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue our worship. Greet one another with a sign of our joy as those who are welcoming the Savior into the world. Love it. Awesome.
Well, if all of you are here, that means that you are probably the most connected people in the church, so I'm not going to go over any of the announcements that are on the flyer. <laughs> Read them, follow them. The one note is, is that the floor in Swayze Hall is going to be, we're going to be beginning to replace that tomorrow. So Swayze Hall will be closed. The staff's going to be working from home during the, the period while the floor is being replaced, but we are available. Just call and um, we're available by appointment to meet off campus. If you have stuff that's happening in the building, that's fine as long as it's not happening in Swayze Hall, not a problem. With that, I want to invite up, oh, uh, here she is, good. Come on, look what I got, take one, yeah. You look what you did, yep. All right, here, well, we're, I'm just gonna take this and I, I think I have close to enough for everybody. We'll find out on the way up, all right. Well, what, do we, what is this? It's a candy cane, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, did you know that these were invented for Christmas? They were invented actually for choir members, for a kid's choir, in order to, to keep them quiet during church. <laughs> this is true. So let's look at this, because they were invented for Christmas in church, and the man who created these, he wanted something that was gonna help kids remember some things about Christmas. So what do you, this is a strange shape for a piece of candy, isn't it? Wouldn't it just be easier to make it into a stick, don't you think? Why do you think it might be this shape? What do you think? Oh. oh, yeah. Well, is there something? Mm, let's see. Is there? Oh, he doesn't have one. That's not a helpful major scene. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes shepherds use what's called a crook, and they'll take a crook, and it's shaped just like this, and they'll use it to move sheep and get them in the right spot. They put it around the neck, and they yank them into the right spot. So it's kind of shaped like that, because we have... We have some shepherds up there, don't they? Don't we? We have shepherds up there because they were the first ones to hear about Jesus, and they went and checked it out in the stable, and they saw that Jesus was right where the angels told them that he was going to be. What If we hold it this way, what does that look like? It looks like a J, and well, that probably reminds us of Jesus' name, doesn't it? It's one thing. All right, well, let's see here. What else? Um, I see, I see white on there, but then I see red kind of coming down this. And what, do we associate some things with the color red? Maybe a holiday and, yeah, with love. And so it's a sign that love comes down to us at Christmas time. That's, that's a symbol that's in there. And then if we were to taste this, is it, it's, is it salty or bitter? What, what is it? It's minty. It's kind of sweet, isn't it? And that is kind of like the love of God. Love, the love of God is sweet. So now, whenever you look at a candy cane, you can remember important things about Christmas. This is designed to teach us all about Christmas. Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's all join and, and pray together. Will you help us? Help us pray? All right. Dear God, Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for, Christmas. Thank you for your sweet love, Thank you for your sweet love. That, comes that comes down to us. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Take your candy cane. You can head back. You want one too? You're not, you're not above that, are you? Do you want one? No. Okay. All right. I try. once again, let's pray. Gracious God, meet us now on this day that for so many of us is joyful, and yet for some of us is, is a difficult day. It's a day where we remember that there are folks that aren't there anymore. It's a day where we look out at our lives and they don't look the way we thought they were going to look. And so meet us, we pray, however we find ourselves. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I'm too far away from you. Well, uh, today, of course, is Christmas, but you remember a few weeks ago, I, I talked about that time between Thanksgiving and the beginning of December, and I, I talked about how my friend and I called it cusp, this new season that we were inventing, cusp, it was in, you know, that weird time in between when it's, you're not ready to let go of fall, but it's also not quite Christmas yet, you can't quite get into that season. We're about to enter into a new cusp, I'll call it second cusp, maybe, uh, for this new season. Because this week that's coming up for me is a bit of a twilight zone. Is, that, is it that way for anybody else, right? Uh, you know, you're not really sure what the right way to greet people is, if it's Happy New Year or Merry Christmas. Like, what is the line? Is it the 27th or the 28th that Merry Christmas isn't appropriate anymore? I don't, I don't know. You know, the, the hubbub of Christmas dies down. Life doesn't really start up again until after New Year's. It's easy to lose track of what day it is, at least for me it is. And so... What I end up doing, and I think a lot of this, us do this, is we take this year, this time of year as an opportunity to breathe and reflect. And we read those Christmas notes from family and friends that we've gotten over the past weeks. And we think about how our own lives stack up to the lives of our friends and our family. We see those retrospective segments on TV uh, you know, the list of the people we lost or the, the best books that, we, that people read or the top news stories of the year, uh, the best movies and TV shows of the year. And even this morning, I watched a segment that was all about what people think are the top news stories for the year. I don't know why we do that, because they're invariably wrong or they're just, it's obvious what they're going to be, right? This is when we see what the, the next year is going to have in store. And so not only is this a time where we, we reflect on what the year has been globally and what the year is going to bring in writ large, but we also take time for personal inventory during this week too, don't we? Um, in between the hustle and bustle of returns and taking down decorations, I find myself thinking about how I want to be different in the new year? Where do I want to be? What kind of person do I want to be next year? Where have I found myself coming up short? What do I want to accomplish? And I've talked about this before, but the question that I keep coming back to every year at this time of year is, does Christmas make a lick of difference about anything? Does anything change because of what happened on that very first Christmas? Because it seems to me that our lives return all too quickly to the mundane things of life. You know, we get back to packing lunches and sports practice and piano lessons and dance classes. And in just a few days, sorry, we are going to be back to the routine of homework and bedtimes and gone are going to be fancy parties and Christmas feasts. And we're going to be back to that text message at 5.30 that says, hey, can you pick up a bag of salad and a rotisserie chicken on your way home? Like that text message, right? And all of that seems really far removed from a baby boy that was born in a stable in Bethlehem more than 2,000 years ago. And that seems really far removed from, from angel choruses and visiting kings. But in our scripture passage for this morning, listen to how the Apostle Paul talks about the importance of Christmas. So let's listen now to God's word from Paul's letter to Titus. This is God's word. For the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. And we are instructed to turn from godless living and sinful pleasures, we should live in this evil world with wisdom, righteousness, and devotion to God. 
while we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ will be revealed, he gave us life. He gave his life to free us from every kind of sin, to cleanse us, and to make us his very own people, totally committed to doing good deeds. All right, just a little bit of background here. Paul writes this letter to his co-worker Titus. Titus was a man who worked with Paul to establish churches throughout the Mediterranean world, especially on the island of Crete, that big island south of Greece. Uh, and this letter deals with the issues that come up when you're starting a church, the qualities that one should look for in leaders, uh, how the community should manage its internal affairs, the signs to look for to know when the gospel has or has not taken root in somebody's life, it is an intensely practical letter from Paul. It is light on long theological discourses, and it is packed with ordinary, run-of-the-mill, day-to-day wisdom about how Christians should conduct themselves in the world. And Paul writes this letter to Titus because apparently the residents of Crete were a notoriously difficult bunch to work with. Paul quotes a local as saying, The people of Crete are all liars, cruel animals, and lazy gluttons. And to this, Paul simply adds, this is true. (laughs) So this is not exactly the most fertile ground for planting a church. It's definitely a place where I bet Titus is wondering whether all of his hard work is paying off. Whether any of this gospel business makes any difference at all. I suspect he is asking questions that are very similar to the ones that we might find ourselves asking over the coming week. After all the hard work of Christmas, does any of it make a bit of difference? And then Paul tucks tucks this little reminder in at the end of a long discussion about how important it is for Titus to instruct the members of his church to live out their newfound faith and to put it in action in their daily lives. He reminds Titus that the the reason that all of this is worth it, all of the hard work, the blood, the sweat, the tears, all of it, the reason we have hope, the reason we pull out all the stops and we celebrate the miracle of Christmas is because at Christmas, God's grace appears. And when God's grace appears, in Jesus appears, it reveals to all people everywhere God's promised salvation for the world. As much as we cherish this story about Christmas with its romantic manger and soft focus portraits of Madonna and child, Paul insists on reminding us about the truth of Christmas. That Jesus is more than a baby in a manger. He is more than a symbol pointing us to God's grace. He's more than an object lesson about God's love. No, Jesus is the thing itself. He's the genuine article. Jesus is God's grace in full, in the flesh, living and breathing right here among us. He is God's power to save, walking and talking in our midst. Jesus is our great and glorious God and Savior who who breaks into our lives in order to bring us the new life of salvation, to liberate us from sin and to claim us as his own people and to enlist us in his work. And so if we have questions about whether Christmas is worth all of the trouble, if we wonder whether anything changes because of that very first Christmas so long ago, because of a child laid in a manger, that same child who would then go on to a cross, who would then go on to rise from the grave for all of us. And Paul answers that question with a resounding yes. Because of Christmas, everything 
is different. From that moment on, ever since that pivotal moment in history, when God came down, nothing has ever been the same. Because Paul's point is is that when, when God's grace comes as close to us as it does in Jesus, when God's grace comes as close to us as it does at Christmas, it will change your life from first to last, top to bottom, from inside out. This, this grace that appears at Christmas is so complete and, and so, and the salvation that comes with it is so thoroughgoing, so exhaustive that that it comes to life in the normal, ordinary, even boring details of our lives. Paul's point is, as one commentator says, the miracle, the marvels of God's deeds in Jesus Christ come to life in the mundane details of our lives. Which, when you think about it, is kind of the point of Christmas, isn't it? And that first Christmas was pretty ordinary. Jesus didn't come in a flash of light. Jesus wasn't born in a palace. He said he was born the same way that most every other baby has been born. He was born to ordinary, humble parents in a regular old, run-of-the-mill town. And aside from the fact that he had people following him around wherever he went, you couldn't have picked Jesus out of a crowd. Because when God's grace appears at Christmas, Jesus doesn't come just to save the high points of our lives. For that matter, he doesn't come just to redeem the low points of our lives either. He comes to save all of it. Even the stuff that feels mundane and far removed from Bethlehem all those years ago. So I know it's Christmas, but if I can leave you for a, with a homework assignment for the following week. Some questions to think about as we come to the beginning of a new year and, and come down from the high of Christmas. Again, not for today, tomorrow. How will you make sure that Christmas makes a difference? by allowing God's grace to change you this coming year? How will you allow the miracle of Christmas, this miracle of God's grace breaking into the world in Jesus to transform not just the high points, but the mundane, run-of-the-mill, everyday moments of your life too? Because Paul's promise to Titus and Paul's promise to us is that even the ordinary, everyday moments of our lives can bear witness to the grace we have received at Christmas. And that, friends, is good news. Let's pray. Gracious God, give us grace to receive the good news of Christmas And to receive that good news so completely that it changes every moment, every facet of our lives. So that every moment of our lives might be infused with your grace, with your love, with joy, with peace. Give us grace to believe that Christmas changes everything, even when we don't see it, even when we don't feel it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this morning we're going to be taking up our offering, and this is one of those ways that we confirm that Jesus' grace, Jesus coming to us, really does change things because we, we live lives of generosity. And so we invite you to give generously and with joy. The ushers come forward.
Well, we're going to sing with joy. So we invite you to, uh, to join us in our carol sing. You see the hymns that are listed there and the verses that we'll be singing. So Tricia is going to be leading us in our, our carol sing. We want to thank her for being here today on Christmas. Thank you, Trish. Thank you. Let's sing with joy.
Amen. Please be seated. And we're come to the blessing of the toys. So did anybody bring a toy? Anybody bring a toy? Ms. Zion, did you bring a toy? Come on up. Oh, very cool. Oh, a blanket? Yeah. Ooh, now that's pretty cool. Yeah? yeah you want to bring your tip? Look at this. Wow. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Wow. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. This is so cool. Wow, I'm just going to show everybody. Who doesn't want to be a mermaid, right? I mean, look at that. And it's got a... What's that on there? So it's got unicorns and stars on there. That's pretty cool. Oh, and it's got stars at the bottom, too. Yes, this is very important you know, down here. Stars at the bottom. Very cool. Wow. All right. Well, can we... Did anybody else bring a toy to bless? All right. Well, we are going to, we're going to bless the toys. One of the things, why do you think that we, we give presents at Christmas time? Why do you think? Why do you think? Because it's Jesus' birthday? That's a great reason to give gifts. That's right. And I think I remember that there's a part of the Jesus story where people bring him presents. Do you remember that? There's some special people from far away, and they bring him gifts. That's some of, one of the ways. But some, sometimes we give gifts because it's a way of showing people how much we love them and how just happy we are. We give things to people when we're happy. And so one of the things that this helps us to remember when we think about fun gifts like this that we get and that make us happy, and we can share that with other people. Yeah. All right. We, we can share the gifts that we've been given, maybe not like this, but some of the talents and skills that we have, and we can share those with other people, with friends. And so what we're going to do is we're going to ask God to bless these gifts so that they remind us to share all the gifts that God has given us with other people so that we can make them happy. Does that sound like a good idea? All right, will you help the, the adults pray with us? Will you help them? All right, would you join me in prayer? Lord God, we, we thank you for these gifts. And we, yeah, yeah. Lord, we thank you for these gifts. Lord, we thank you for these gifts. Help them. Help them to remind me to share all your gifts with the world around me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I'm going to hand these back to you. These are special, so I'm going to make sure they come all the way back to you. All right. There you go. You got that? Oh, Grandma's going to help too. All right. And let's continue in prayer now as we think about our world and a world that needs the gift of Christmas. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we, we thank you for the gift of Christmas, for your love that comes down to us, your love that fills our lives and our world with the light of hope and salvation. We are we, we really don't know how to take in the magnitude of this gift that you've given to us, a gift of yourself. Where before there was separation between God and humanity, now you have come close to us and brought us close to you. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for that. And we pray that the world might know that good news. We pray for those who do not know you, Lord. We pray that they might know the good news of your coming. We pray for parts of our world that are in need of the peace you bring. We pray for people in our world who are in need of provision and protection. We pray for people in our world who are in need of the liberation you bring. Liberation from 
slavery, liberation from oppression, liberation from sin and brokenness. We pray for those who need the healing that you bring. We pray for those who need the joy you bring. We think of those in our congregation, Lord, who are in need of prayer. We pray specifically for Andy and Barbara and Brian, for Buddy, Christine, Deb, Jeff, Gina, Harry, for Jay, Nicholas, Rich, Dahlia. We pray for the Martin family and the Miller family and the Drumheller family. Pray for Esther. We pray for those whose jobs call them away from their families. We pray for those whose jobs take them overseas. And we offer you our own prayers, whether we offer them silently or aloud. Lord, we pray all these things, trusting that you hear us because you came to us. We pray all these things in confidence, trusting that you know what it's like to be where we are because you became one of us. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus the one who was born this day and who taught us to pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So I'll stand and sing our final song. What a joyful day. I'm so glad that we were able to celebrate that together. And so as we leave from this place, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit.
And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this Christmas and always. Amen. Amen. Friends, Merry Christmas. Go in God's peace. Merry Christmas.